I'm sorry, Senator Cassidy. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, um, I'm going to lead into my first question, uh, kind of repeating some of the things I said in my opening statement. Uh, for decades, this committee has passed legislation knowing that we would have to ask companies to step up at perhaps a pandemic time and do exactly what Moderna did during this time. And so others didn't make the same choice as Moderna to collaborate with the government. So the question is, uh, if we send a hostile signal to future and prospective partners that Moderna is now being singled out for its decision to work more closely with the government, what signal would that send to that future prospective partner? Now, related to that, there's folks who have spoken of March in, where the intellectual property which has been developed by Moderna or Pfizer or another would be, if you will, marched in by the federal government and shared worldwide to those who had had no role in its development. What would that do to the willingness of a future prospective partner to work in a public-private partnership with the federal government to find a solution as hastily as it had to be found? Thank you, Senator. So first, let me say we were very proud to partner with the U.S. government, and when the call came, we raised our hand and we said, of course, we will help and do our best work. I think what is key for any enterprise, not only in the pharmaceutical industry, but across different fields, is to know what is going to happen. Companies need to plan based on what are the hypotheses or how we're going to work together during the crisis and also after the crisis. And so I think what we need as industry is clear rules that do not change. So for example, during the BADA discussions, there were no discussion on commercial price. It was assumed, never discussed, to the best of my knowledge, no, but I have limited time. So the question is, if the government were to exercise its march-in rights and take the IP from the company and distribute it worldwide without compensation for the company, what would that do to, what can you imagine it would do to a, a company, a future company's willingness to work with the federal government in a public-private partnership? I worry, Senator, that it will really impact the willingness of those companies to partner with the government, and I think patients will suffer. Okay. Now, let me ask you, um, in your this is a different question, different set, in your patient assistance program, well, I assume that will also apply to the short-term limited duration programs, because to be clear, under current U.S. law, if you are commercially insured, if you are uh, federally or state insured through Medicaid, Medicare, et cetera, you don't have to pay for this vaccine, at least as the patient. You're paying indirectly through, through premiums, but you're not paying directly. And you're going to make through your patient assistance program available for the uninsured. Two questions about that. Will that also include limited, um, a limited uh, short-term li short -term limited duration policies? which do not, are not under the federal mandate to provide vaccines at no cost? Um, I'm, that's a question. I don't know if you know that. I don't know the answer, but I will make a note to follow up with my team, and I'll make sure we follow up back with you. After. Please, and I would ask that those folks be afforded the same as the uninsured, because effectively for vaccine, they're uninsured. Secondly, as regards the vaccine itself, will your patient assistance program also include the administration fee? So this is something we have to look into, sir. I will say for the uninsured, just as a doc who yes. treated the uninsured, yes. it's not just the cost of the vaccine, it is the administration fee. And obviously that's something you can limit. Yeah. You can make it an X amount of dollars. Yeah. It doesn't have to be astronomical. But, we, but I agree with Senator Sanders. We want that PAP to be something that works for patients and is not just kind of like, oh, yeah, we have it, but no one can use it. Um, now, uh, I also want to clarify a couple other things. It was suggested that the IRA is what has resulted in the coverage of the COVID vaccine, but indeed that was the CARES Act, just to make that clear. I also want to make something else clear, that there's been a lot of discussion about pharmaceutical cost, but this has nothing to do with the cost of a drug. The cost of a drug is related to pharmacy benefit managers. It's related to the initial price of the, of the drug. It's related to scarcity, you name it. But that is a separate topic from this. And I look forward, Mr. Chairman, to that future discussion in which we do discuss the high cost of pharmaceuticals. But that is a separate issue from this vaccine. And I think I wanted to make that clear because it was not, you know, perhaps not as clear as it could be. And with that, I yield. Thank you, Senator Cassidy. Uh, Senator